Hi, and welcome to the Homeopathy Health Show. I am Atik Bhati, a fourth-generation homeopath with over 20 years of professional experience in this field of healing. In the Homeopathy Health Show, I'll be talking all things homeopathy and natural, with guest interviews, tips and advice, and answering some of your questions. Homeopathy is truly a unique, complementary system of healing suitable for all ages, young and old. I'd love to hear from you and welcome your questions on homeopathy and how it can or has helped you. Feel free to email me at health at liketreatslike.co.uk or visit www.liketreatslike.co.uk for more information. Once you're there, take a look at the Knowledge Academy and blog section where you will find interesting information. Both sections are growing day by day, so always check back. So let's begin today's show on UK Health Radio, the world's number one talk health radio, real feel-good radio. Well, firstly, I hope and pray you are well and in the best of health, and may it certainly remain that way. Coming up in today's show, two studies from Germany on homeopathy and its efficacy, time for reflection, and the regular Q&A. In the Q&A, I'll be answering a question received on homeopathy and its definitions of alternative medicine, complementary medicine, and integrative medicine. I'll also be answering a question on my personal favourite homeopathic remedy. I'll also be providing a short biography of another leading homeopath, a very eminent one at that, who carried the work of Dr Samuel Hahnemann forward, namely... Dr. James Tyler Kent. His contribution to homeopathy is immense, and his contribution is second only to the founder of homeopathy itself, Dr. Samuel Hahnemann. Now, did you know that UK Health Radio actually have an official e-mag, which is called Health Triangle Magazine? Health Triangle Magazine includes all things health, well-being and wellness, and I've had the honour to be able to write every month some pieces on homeopathy, for example, homeopathy in first aid and winter remedies, to name a few. So check that out by going to www.ukhealthradio.com and searching for Health Triangle magazine. Now, in one of the previous episodes, I spoke to you about the many trials and provings of new remedies that are taking place around the world, specifically in Germany, France, and also in India. I was reading some very interesting news uh, just the other day. There have been two separate uh, recent studies published in Germany on homeopathy. Now, the first one it was a survey of over 1,300 uh, parents at the paediatric department of the Elizabeth Hospital in Essen and also the Children's Hospital in Landshut. Now, in this study, it was revealed that homeopathy is the most popular integrative medicine therapy for children, ahead of even osteopathy and phytotherapy. The study, which was undertaken to assess the demand for complementary and integrative medicine methods, found that 40% of parents use homeopathy at home, and many would like it to be incorporated into clinical primary care. The parents said that they wanted homeopathy, to be made more widely available, with a resounding 88% saying that they would be willing to pay for the treatment privately. Now, the second study, which was carried out on behalf of the DHU, which is the Deutsche Homeopathic Union, showed that more than half of Germans have used homeopathy, with 70% reporting that they are open to it or have already used it. The annual survey also showed that more women use homeopathic medicines than men, 64% in fact, compared to 42% of men, and that it is most widespread among the age range of 45 to 59 year olds. Interesting indeed, and I'm quite sure that any future studies or the studies that are currently being undertaken will of course continue to show that homeopathy is very, very big, um, in Germany itself, which was, of course, the home and the birthplace of the founder of homeopathy, Dr. Samuel Hahnemann. Can 
continuing with my special series on the history and development of homeopathy, specifically short biographies of eminent leading homeopaths who carried Dr. Samuel Hahnemann's work on homeopathy forward, today's biography is on James Tyler Kent, who was born in 1849 and passed away in 1910. Now James Tyler Kent is said to have contributed as much to the great homeopathic works as Dr. Samuel Hahnemann, the founder of homeopathy. Indeed, he left a very impressive and lasting legacy and mark upon homeopathy. Kent was a professor of anatomy in the American Medical College, St. Louis, and he was a professor of Materia Medica at the Homeopathic Medical College of St. Louis, the School of Homeopathy, Philadelphia, the Hahnemann Medical College and Hospital in Chicago, and the Herring Medical College Hospital. James Tyler Kent was also the President and Trustee of the Chicago Homeopathic Hospital. Kent was a member of the Illinois State Homeopathic Medical Society, the American Institute of Homeopathy, and the International Hahnemannian Association, besides which he holds an honorary corresponding membership in the British Homeopathic Medical Society. Prior to his involvement with homeopathy, Kent had practiced conventional medicine in St. Louis, Missouri. He discovered and converted to homeopathy as a result of his wife's recovery from a serious ailment using homeopathic methods. Many homeopathic practitioners today still follow Kent's early method of curing, which was to prescribe remedies using single doses of high potencies. When he taught, he would inspire his Kentians, as they are known, to use these higher potencies, and he held a strong belief that homeopaths must treat patients in their entirety, including the physical body, as well as the mental, emotional and spiritual elements, using these high potencies. Later in his career, however, Kent began using Hahnemann's method of starting with low potencies and working up the scale by threes, for example, a six, nine, twelve, and so forth. One of his greatest contributions to the profession of homeopathy and its teachings was his completely unique style of repertory. Although others exist, Kent's famous repertory, called the Great Repertory, is still the popular choice and has been described as more complete, systematic and precise, with more well-described symptoms. Kent is also known for developing pictures of constitutional types of patients. A well-known example would be his description of sulphur as the ragged philosopher. There are many works based on Kent's principles, including a book by one of his pupils, Margaret Tyler. Margaret Tyler further developed this idea of pictures into a book entitled Homeopathic Drug Pictures. Kent is considered to have been a great homeopath, and his philosophy, homeopathic interpretations and influence have steadily continued to grow in popularity since his death. James Tyler Kent was born in Woodhill, New York, he graduated from the Eclectic Medical Institute of Cincinnati and started practice in St. Louis as an eclectic. He became interested in homeopathy in 1878 when his wife's illness failed to respond either to eclectic or allopathic treatment and was cured, in fact, by a homeopath. James Tyler Kent began practice with low potencies, but he was not satisfied. Later, he resolved to test the 30th potency to see if there was any medicine present. He prepared with his own hands the 30th potency of podophyllum according to centesimal scale after the method of Hahnemann. One day a child was brought in to his clinic in emergency and it appeared that the child would not live long. While it lay in the arms of its mother, a thin yellow fecal stool ran all over his carpet the odour was like that of podophyllum stool. It was horribly offensive, and the stool was so copious that the mother made the remark that she did not know where it all came from. Dr. Kent thought to test 
for defilum 30 prepared by him for that case. Next morning, he was surprised to learn from the grandmother of the child that he was doing well. One dose of podophyllum cured a dangerously ill patient. He then realized the power of the potentized remedies and he thought of using increasingly potentized remedies in his practice. He became famous as a high potency homeopath as most of the homeopaths before him were using very low potency remedies. He advocated the use of the 30th, 200th, 1M, 50M, CM, DM and MM potencies made on the centesimal scale. Dr. Kent introduced the doctrine of series in degrees in the treatment of chronic diseases. He found that one potency was not sufficient for chronic cases, though it would generally do for acute illnesses. Many chronic illnesses were cured by keeping the patient under the influence of the one indicated remedy for two or more years. But this cannot be done with continuous curative action unless the doctrine of series in degrees is fully understood and used. Dr. James Tyler Kent discovered that just as there are octaves of musical tones, so there are octaves in the simple substance, through which severally it is possible to correspond with the various planes of the interior organism of the animal cells. These planes correspond to the similar remedy in the 30th, 200th, 1M, 10M, 50M, CM, DM and MM potencies. He found that when the action of the 30th is completed, the patient needs the 200th potency. But when the action of the 200th potency is exhausted, the patient requires the 1M potency, and so on, till the same remedy in higher and highest potencies cures permanently. Dr. Kent also discovered the law of vital action and reaction, as pointed out by Dr. Hahnemann. A medicine is not too high to cure, so long as it is capable of aggravating the symptoms belonging to the sickness in the first hours of inacute and in the first few days of a chronic sickness. He also thought that a homeopathic aggravation was essential for the application of the similimum in chronic cases. Dr. Kent felt that if there was relief without homeopathic aggravation, the chronic sickness was only superficially affected and would require a deeper acting remedy to remove the vital disorder. Dr. James Tyler Kent laid greatest importance to the will, understanding and memory of the patient. They form the innermost of the man and are extended outwards through the general physical organism. Cure takes place from centre to periphery, but if the symptoms retreat from periphery to centre, the prescription is wrong and must be antidoted. Hence, in order to treat successfully, the homeopath should know the correspondence of organs and direction of cure. Dr. Kent proved many new medicines, which he described in his new book, New Remedies, Clinical Cases, Lesser Writings, Aphorisms and Precepts. Dr. Kent was famous for teaching Materia Medica. He taught Materia Medica at the Homeopathic Medical College of St. Louis from 1881 to 1888, at the School of Homeopathy in Philadelphia from 1890 to 1899, at the Hahnemann Medical, Medical College and Hospital in Chicago from 1903 to 1909, and the Herring Medical College Hospital. Students from England, European countries, India and other parts of the world sought admission to the institution where he taught the subject. John Weir, Arthur Hill Grimmer, Pierre Schmitz, B.K. Bose and other famous homeopaths from all over the world were his disciples. He was the president and trustee of Chicago Homeopathic Hospital. In 1874, he married a Baptist like himself settled in St. Louis and began practice. In 1876, he became the professor of anatomy at the American College of St. Louis. During the same year, his wife became seriously ill and was cured by a homeopath, resulting in his complete and enthusiastic conversion to homeopathy. 
During that same year, Kent lost his first wife and studied works of Emanuel Swedenborg and adopted his philosophy. Kent met his second wife, Clara Louise, a practicing physician, and diagnosed her as having an incurable iatrogenic miasm of lachesis due to too many repetitions of dose. In 1896, Kent and his pupils saw over 18,800 patients in one single year. In 1916, Kent went to his country home in Montana to rest and write a real book, but his catarrhal bronchitis turned to Bright's disease and he died mostly from years of overwork. James Tyler Kent passed away on June the 6th at Sunnyside Orchard in Montana. James Tyler Kent's elementary and secondary education was acquired in Franklin Academy, Prattsburg, and Woodhill Academy, Woodhill, and his higher education in Madison, now Colgate, University, Hamilton, New York, where he came to his degree in 1868. He was educated in medicine in the Eclectic Medical Institute, Cincinnati, Ohio, graduating there in 1871, and the Homeopathic Medical College of Missouri in St. Louis, where he was awarded the diploma of that institution in 1889. Dr. Kent began his profession and his professional career in St. Louis as a physician of the Eclectic School, at the same time being actively connected with the several eclectic journals in the capacity of writer, and also took an earnest part in the councils of the Eclectic National Medical Association. He was Professor of Anatomy in the American Medical College in St. Louis between 1877 and 1878, about which time his attention was forcibly directed to homeopathy through the serious illness of his wife. He became a careful student of Hahnemann's Organon and other works of the new school, with result in his complete conversion to homeopathy, his resignation from the Eclectic National Medical Association in 1879, and his appointment to the Chair of Anatomy in the Homeopathic Medical College of Missouri, which he held from 1881 until 1883, and Professor of Materia Medica from 1883 until 1888. Later on, he was Dean and Professor of Materia Medica in the Postgraduate School of Homeopathics, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, Dean and Professor of Materia Medica in Dunham Medical College, Chicago, Dean and Professor of Materia Medica in Herring Medical College, Chicago, holding the same chair in the Hahnemann Medical College in Chicago. Thus, for more than 35 years, Dr. Kent has been a conspicuous figure in medical circles and for more than 25 years in teaching and practice under the law of Similia and he is looked upon as one of the best teachers and exponents of the homeopathic schools in America. His contributions to the literature of the profession are known by their strength rather than by their length and include more prominently his Kent's Repertory, Kent's Homeopathic Philosophy, and Kent's Lectures on Materia Medica. James Tyler Kent, on October 29, 1904, writes the following as a preface to the first edition of his book, Lectures on Homeopathic Materia Medica. The speech of layman presents all sickness to the physician's mind, hence the Materia Medica must be reduced from technicalities to simple speech. No two remedies are studied exactly alike. Each has its own requirement in order to bring before the mind what is characteristic. Hahnemann's Materia Medica Pura, Herring's Guiding Symptoms, and the Encyclopedia of Pure Materia Medica have been the works that have given the most help in these studies. The Materia Medica can be learned by careful study and by using it, it can be understood, but not memorized. All who would memorize the Materia Medica must ignominiously fail. To be constantly at hand, it must be constantly and correctly used. The continuous study of the Materia Medica by the aid of a full repertory for comparison is the only means of continuing in a good working knowledge. To learn the Materia Medica, one must master Hahnemann's organon, after which 
the symptomology and the organon go hand in hand. The organon, the symptomology and a full repertory must be the constant reference books if careful homeopathic prescribing is to be attained and maintained. James Tyler Kent, October 29th, 1904, State of Chicago. So that was a short biography of a very, very eminent leading homeopath. In fact, probably one of the uh, greatest homeopaths after Dr. Samuel Hahnemann himself, Dr. James Tyler Kent. And uh, he has indeed left a lasting legacy. And his disciples and those that follow his method of prescribing, follow his repertory and use his Materia Medica are known as Kentians. And indeed, he was a proven, not only a proven medical doctor, but an expert, expert homeopathic doctor indeed. May God bless him in abundance for his services to humanity, and may he rest in peace. UK Health Radio, the station that makes you feel good. The station that makes you feel good. I do hope you're enjoying the short biographies of some of the leading and eminent homeopaths, certainly who had um, training from Dr. Samuel Hahnemann or were alive during his time as well. And they really have, as you'll see later on in the episodes as we cover more and more of them, they've really made huge difference to the actual understanding of homeopathy and its progress. Amazing. Do remember that you can not only listen to my show on UK Health Radio, but also you can now listen to the shows on podcast platforms, including Apple, Spotify, Amazon Music, iHeart and GeoSavan. And this is the new UK Health Radio podcast platform. So just go to any podcast platform and just look for UK Health Radio and you'll find my shows there, which you can listen to at any time, stream on demand, or you can even download and share with friends. Now, I also wanted to share with you that UK Health Radio have an official e-mag and that's called Health Triangle Magazine. And you can find it on the socials like Facebook and Instagram. But also, if you go to the UK Health Radio website, you'll find it there. I have the good fortune of uh, contributing regularly to Health Triangle magazine through articles. So you'll find my homeopathic articles, which contain homeopathic tips, advice and guidance every month. So do uh, look out for those. And I will share them as they are released on my socials, which include Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and and actually a few more as well. But uh, I think those four are more than enough. Um, it's hard enough just to keep up with them, to be honest. Uh, it's uh, It certainly is very time-consuming indeed. I'd also like to extend a heartfelt thank you for all the many, many questions that are coming through on homeopathy and remedies, um, advice and guidance which is being sought. So I will try to answer as many as I can on every show. So let's uh, begin with the Q&A for this episode, actually. The first question for today is um, asked, does homeopathy work well with allopathic medicine? Now, um, allopathic medicine means conventional medicine as uh, Western medicine, so medicine that you would receive from your doctor, your GP, as such. So that's classed as conventional medicine. It was actually Dr. Samuel Hahnemann, the founder of homeopathy, who first used that word, allopathic medicine, and this was to differentiate between homeopathic and conventional treatments. Allopathic medicine is actually another term, as I've just said, for conventional Western medicine, in contrast to complementary medicine, which can also be uh, referred to as alternative medicine. So, Allopathic medicine or conventional medicine, of course, uses the medical practices like uh, blood work, prescription drugs, surgery, 
and consultations with a, con a con hospital consultant, for example. Now, one very important thing I would like to clarify here, and this is as a result of this excellent question actually received, is how homeopathy is defined. So homeopathy is defined as a number of things. So there's actually three specifically. Number one is alternative medicine. So alternative means it is alternative to allopathic or conventional medicine. So here homeopathy is alternative. It's an alternative to medicine you would see where you would receive from the doctor or the hospital consultant. And then number two, homeopathy is also referred to as complementary medicine, which means it complements whatever other therapy that you're on. So you may be taking treatment, let's say, using the Chinese system of medicine. You may be on herbal remedies or medicine or even conventional medicine, allopathic medicine. And you will then take complementary therapy, which would include, for example, in this example, homeopathic medicines. And then there is uh, number three, which is integrative medicine. And this is where both are combined at the same time. Now, this includes, for example, conventional medicine and somebody using homeopathy, somebody using Chinese medicine, herbal medicine, Ayurvedic medicine, or somebody perhaps going for osteopathy, hypnotherapy. So this is all uh, comes under the realm of uh, integrative medicine. Now, this is very, very important in today's complex world with the myriad of diseases that we have. Homeopathy is very much integrative medicine, very, very much indeed. Yes, it is complementary when it is taken alongside, let's say, conventional medicine. But as soon as it's taken alongside conventional medicine, it actually changes from being complementary to integrative so that's a very key point to, to understand. As far as homeopathy being alternative, well, that's like any other system, isn't it? Herbal medicine is alternative. So is Ayurvedic medicine and Chinese medicine. As a few, a few examples there for you. They are all alternative medical practices. However, that doesn't mean that they do not combine well with other treatments. So... We have alternative medicine. Homeopathy on its own is amazing. It's incredible and it works very, very well um, without the need for conventional medicine sometimes or many a time, should I say, especially when you're looking at acute phases and acute diseases or ailments. But then many a time the diseases or the disease state is such that it needs conventional, which is allopathic medicine. And at that time, one may look at a range of complementary medicines or therapies one of them, let's say, is homeopathy. As soon as homeopathy is then used alongside conventional allopathic medicine, it, it becomes integrative medicine, as in one works alongside the other. So in answer to the question, um, does homeopathy work alongside conventional medicine? Yes, absolutely. It works alongside allopathic medicine very, very well. Uh, this is a daily encounter for me, certainly. In many cases, homeopathy also works very, very, very well on its own, without the need for conventional medicine. So uh, it's the best of both worlds. You can combine if you have a very serious disease which needs, which needs medicine from the GP or the, uh, the consultant at the hospital, then... Of course, that's very important to take. Uh, that's a very, very important point. Um, do not suffer unnecessarily. If you need professional medical help, you should always seek that and go for that. That's the best way. We have to be very sensible in treating disease. But at that time, homeopathy can be combined and it becomes integrative medicine. And they t both work on different wavelengths. So you've got technically, you've got the best of both worlds there, haven't you? And then, like I've said, in many cases... Um, Sometimes acute cases um, do not need the intervention of any conventional medicine. So, for example, if you've sprained your ankle, if you've got a cough or a sore throat, then, or um, if you've got hay fever, homeopathy works very, very well indeed on its own. So, always consult 
your GP if your uh, ailments are of a severe nature and or always consult a homeopathic practitioner who will best guide you uh, on the treatment to take. So my approach very much is the integrative route. Uh, at sometimes there is the complementary side, of course, but generally I find the majority of people I see are already on medicine from the doctor, from the GP or from the hospital. So then very much homeopathy is given as an integrative um, uh, approach and it's given to work on a different wavelength to help the patient to recover from his or her ailments, condition or diseases. So, so I hope that uh, answers your question in uh, some, some detail. And uh, it's a very good question, so thank you very much for sending that through. Now the next question, a uh, very nice question actually, I have to say. So I've, <laughs> I've been asked... Um, what is my favorite homeopathic medicine? Well, uh, you know, when anyone ever asks me that question, to be honest, the first medicine that comes into my mind is actually the remedy called China. Now, the reason I mention China is because I recall when I was obviously at a younger age, um, my father was a homeopathic doctor, a qualified homeopathic, qualified and registered homeopathic doctor. And he had a, a cabinet and that held a number of remedies. And I remember at that young age asking him what these were. And I remember looking and identifying China, which was a small bottle on one of these, on one of the shelves of the rack and actually picking it up. And looking at it, and I thought, China, and then immediately I thought, that's the country China, so what does this mean? And then my father proceeded to explain. And actually, as the story goes, that was my first interest or realization of homeopathy. And, well, um, you know, later on, of course, um, I became more and more fascinated and realized the immense healing properties of homeopathic medicines and the power that they possess as far as the healing qualities within each medicine. And uh, so that's uh, that's why China comes to mind, certainly. And I'll always always remember that. It was, uh, it was a very small bottle, you know, with some blue writing, which just said China 30, actually. It said China 30, 30 being the potency. And my father then proceeded to explain... So that was my door in. Uh, the door opened as far as homeopathy was concerned. And I'm very grateful to God Almighty for his grace that I was able to study and get to understand homeopathy better and better as the years went by. And today I'm one of many hundreds of thousands of homeopaths around the world who are blessed to be able to serve humanity through this system of medicine I'm truly very, very grateful. Now, as far as a real favourite remedy is concerned, as in which one do I often use, it's, you know, it's really hard because there there are a few. I've certainly got a few favourite ones. But I would say off the top of my head, if you ask me, and of course, I'm forgetting China for a minute, um, because that has different roots of, of it being my favourite. But I would say arsenicum album now the reason for that is because arsenicum album is a phenomenal remedy or medicine which works so well on so many different levels it has the true homeopathic triad principle of mind body and soul or should i say uh, the correct way should actually be soul mind and body so it works from the top down, or it works from the bottom up, or it can work in between. Arsenicum is such an effective remedy for food poisoning, for example, for restlessness. It's excellent remedy for stomach ulcers. It is a phenomenal remedy for mental, emotional conditions, which include restlessness, anxiety, panic, worry, fear, anticipation, apprehension, and the list goes on and on. To give you a, a true idea 
of Arsenicum album, I'm going to read out the clinical indications from the Materia Medica. Um, this one being the one that I'm using at the moment is the Nature's Materia Medica, fourth edition by the late Dr. Robin Murphy. So get ready for this. These are the clinical indications. Abscess, acne rosacea, allergies, anemia, angina, anxiety, asthma, bronchitis, burning pains, chills, colitis, coughs, croup, dandruff, despair, diabetes, diarrhea, dysentery, eczema, ear disorders, eye disorders, face eruptions, fears, fever, food poisoning, gangrene, gastric ulcers, gastritis, gastroenteritis, glandular swellings, gout, hay fever, headaches, hepatitis, herpes, Hodgkin's disease, influenza, intermittent fever, jaundice, leucoria, lung disorders, malaria, measles, nephritis, nausea, nervousness, neuralgia, and there's more, numbness, paralysis, pneumonia, prostration, psoriasis, restlessness, rheumatism, ringworm, septic fever, sneezing, seasickness, stomach disorders, strains, sore throat, habit to take tobacco, tongue disorders, typhus, vomiting, weakness, whooping cough, worms, and yellow fever. These are the clinical indications for the use of Arsenicum album. So these are purely the ones that I'm reading out from the Materia Medica. So this, you can see why it's my one of my favorite remedies, because there's so many amazing indications. And certainly I've used it very, very frequently. I, of course, I continue to use it very frequently. Um, in fact, I was talking about the, the, the soul, mind and body. Arsenicum album is an amazing remedy when it's taken combined with aconite in a 200C for the treatment of panic attacks and anxiety. So this would be perfect in a situation where perhaps the panic is to do with giving a speech or a presentation at school. It might be to do with just meeting new people and you find this sense of, you know, like a wave of perhaps panic that may be beginning or you just don't feel right, you feel restlessness, um, unsure. Arsenicum album combined with aconitum or aconite in 200C. And this can be taken one hour, for example, before a presentation and repeated 30 minutes again, uh, 30 minutes before, so one hour before the presentation and again at uh, when 30 minutes remain. Or if it's panic that is uh, perhaps of a more severe nature, then it can be taken every 10 to 15 minutes quite safely. I have found personally that arsenicum album with aconite 200, a few doses is generally sufficient at 15 minute intervals. In fact, many a time just one dose is sufficient. So that's a golden nugget for you there. It's tried and tested and it certainly works very, very well indeed. Hi, this is Atik from the Homeopathy Health Show. I'm here to help and support you in your health and wellness journey, to answer your questions on everything homeopathy and much more. To get in touch, contact me via my email health at liketreatslike.co.uk or visit online at www.liketreatslike.co.uk You can also find me on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram by searching for Like Treats Like. Or just visit UK Health Radio online and you'll find my contact information under the Presenters tab. Homeopathy is a wonderful natural complementary system of healing, so let's work together for your health, wellness and vitality. And now it's time for reflection with poems of healing. This one is called Deep Sad Feeling. Deep sad feelings, sometimes part of life we take them, being undercover with curtains closed, 
get heaviness, put on hard clothes and lay in bed. No eating or eating too much. Stuck in this place of rejection, where no matter how good you are, how much you offer, it feels like it's not enough. You cry for hours and sometimes you don't know why you are crying. It's just a heaviness that comes along that you can never explain. All you need is spirit. Gal, you must do something. The fear of someone find out out the battles is piling. The fear of being known for battling with depression and the tag. It is getting bigger than we can handle. The battle is the culture. Mental illness is talked about not. What will, people say, keeps us in bondage. But all we need to do is pause. Then, walk to the therapist and get diagnosed. There are God-gifted ones. That will walk with you, the path to livelihood and happiness. This poem was written by Ruth M. Kamigisha. Published in Saudi Poems of Healing by the United Nations. UK Health Radio. The station that makes you feel good. station that makes you feel good. Now in today's Q&A I was asked about my favourite homeopathic remedy and um, I mentioned China but it got me thinking as I was answering that as well that it really is um, interesting and it is purely the grace of God that I am able to serve humanity in this field of healing. I remember that certainly at a young age, even though homeopathy was in my family, my father was a homeopathic doctor, my grandfather, my great-grandfather, and before that the lineage was very much herbal medicine until um, homeopathy came into the family as such, but I was just wondering that uh, how things work out, you know, when you're destined to do something and how one is guided. And I couldn't be happier. Serving humanity is just amazing. It's incredible. It's phenomenal. It is humbling. And it really is an honour in the most humblest way, I say. It's such a great honour to be able to serve humanity, to be able to help people when they need help to be able to help those who have perhaps been let down or who find there is no other way or no other route and, you know, they they come and they ask for the help. It's such a nice feeling to be able to help people. And, uh, you know, one of the things that homeopathy has personally helped me with is the greater service to humanity. So and a large part of my time is uh, taken up with voluntary work. And this is at the weekends, including the evenings, early mornings, and any sort of time of day, really, that I can sort of spare, uh, you know, from recording this show, of course, preparing for this, and also working with patients, helping and treating patients. But there is all this time, and it's such a nice feeling to be able to help people in humanity. And this includes serving humanity in the field of um, hospital visits, raising funds, for example, charity, uh, working with closely with charities. Uh, It includes litter picking. It includes raising money, for example, for the annual poppy appeal for the Royal British Legion and so many other things. There's there's so, so many things involved. Just um, recently I was asked to go back to a school to deliver an assembly on a specific subject matter. And that was, again, a very humbling experience. And then there are other opportunities as well to talk at uh, events and programs. And it's all to do with serving humanity, um, helping and supporting the homeless community during difficult times. And it's uh, 
it's always a difficult time for people who are finding themselves for no fault of their own um, homeless and you know that requires a lot of time and commitment but uh, I tell you something interesting and one thing that I'd like to share with you and something that I've learned especially in as I age and day by day is that never ever ignore anyone every single person has a story to tell all we have to do is listen every person it might be someone you would think no there is nothing that they can tell me about themselves or their history that you know would be of interest but believe me when i say every single human being has a story to tell it just needs somebody to listen someone who can sit down with them and connect and say tell me about yourself and that is so 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 rewarding it's unbelievable the things i learn from the stories and the family histories of people is unbelievable i do not think personally there has been ever a day that i have spoken to someone and i have not learned something new or certainly something that has got me thinking um or made me reflect or ponder deeper on you know the grace of god the mercy of god and how when you help somebody you know that help always comes round um it always comes full circle some people say you know you we generally hear the word karma if you do good to someone someone will do good to you and what a wonderful situation to be in because you could argue that well if i help somebody then how are they possibly going to help me but if you talk about the circle of life and circle they would tell someone else and they would tell somebody else and somebody else and eventually it comes back to you and when your time comes for help and it could be any help it's not physical help it could be emotional support it could be f- fixing a, a, a leaking pipe you know it could be anything but it always comes back and there's always somebody there but for that to work one has to be willing themselves to be able to help and um anyway i just thought i'd share that with you really it was uh, i was thinking of homeopathy and how i became so fascinated and interested at a young age and how it was just destined and i'm so grateful that god has blessed me with this opportunity to serve humanity and uh, to do the best that i can and it's the best feeling in the world especially when that phone call or that visit uh, arrives and and the patient themselves uh, relays that Do you know what i was suffering so much and these remedies helped me or, or this helped me or you said something and that helped me it's just so so beautiful i'll leave you with a quote from uh, rumi who was a 13th century persian poet and he was also a theologian and a sufi mystic and the quote goes yesterday i was clever so i wanted to change the world today i am wise so i am changing myself i do hope you've enjoyed the homeopathy health show here on uk health radio the world's number 1 talk health radio Tune in next time for more things homeopathy, interviews and segments on the healing possibilities that homeopathy can bring you. And don't forget to visit UK Health Radio online at www.ukhealthradio.com to see the many other amazing shows available to listen live and on demand. Or why not download the app from the iOS and Android stores. Until next time, stay safe and take care.